What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today we are doing something very special, something I've never done before for the Day by Day podcast, because we are doing a holiday-themed episode, both for Christmas and the New Year's. Now, my special guest today, as I said, we're doing a New Year's theme holiday uh, <laughs> episode. My special guest, um, I'm going to just start by saying this. 2022, hands down, easily, my most controversial episode was with the one and only Kiwi, a.k.a. Central Kiwi. I mean, she had dudes left and right commenting, coming for her. She had (laughs) girls left and right on her side against what she was saying, but she stood 10 toes on her word. And that's all I ask for here on the Day by Day podcast is for two things, for you to be yourself and to be a hundred. But like I said, the most controversial episode I've done in 2022 So what did I do to kick off 2023? (laughs) I brought Kiwi back in the building. (laughs) Kiwi, a.k.a. Sensual Kiwi. What is up, girl? How are you? Hey, Dede. How are you today? I'm doing good. 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 (laughs) We are, um, first and foremost, let me say I love your festive attire. Thank you. Thank you. I love your sweater. Thank you. Feeling Um, the... Feeling the cow over there i know right what's it, his name heifer no if i had <laughs> if i had to name the cow it's giving me it's giving me girl vibes i think she's a girl so i would name her uh felupe 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 that is the name of the cow on my sweater <laughs> but this is like the perfect ugly sweater for a christmas party or whatever may have yeah, you so i'm not gonna lie i haven't celebrated christmas in the past two years because you know since being on my own i usually go home for thanksgiving and my birthday which mm-hmm. is right after thanksgiving but i haven't done christmas so i haven't really been in a christmas spirit but putting this sweater on you yeah. being here with the tie in the hat me drinking this spiked eggnog thanks, i'm thanks, i'm thanks. feeling the christmas spirit can we cheer to that <laughs> yeah we can, can we cheer, cheer to that? that i'm feeling the christmas spirit right now i'm not gonna lie i'm really feeling it hey that's what's up i'm glad i could present that to you because i felt like you know it would be really good for us to do this mm-hmm. bringing the new year on you know this yeah coming together speaking on 2022 whatever yeah you know? we're, we're gonna speak on it all we're gonna speak on 2022 <laughs> we're gonna speak on christmas and we're just gonna speak on overall mm-hmm. life Amen. um mm-hmm. so since our last episode it's been a few months uh how have you been since then and what have you been up to I've been doing really good. Um, I am no longer dancing, actually. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. Yeah, I'm not dancing right so, now. So just, you know, for those who may have not have caught our last episode, um, well, I was going to say you are, but you were a former dancer. Yes. For how many years were you dancing? Um, I was dancing for two years and doing online stuff for... Um, uh, like three years. Three. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what made you go from uh, dancing at the club to uh, going back to the bank? <sighs> well, I guess I got to keep it real. Please do. Please <laughs> do. Um, the men. Mm. And um, Any men I- in particular or just the overall group and energy that you've been receiving from men recently while dancing? The men at the club being cheap, mm. um, so it's 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 not worth it. It's men don't. I used to dance in twenty fifteen too, and mm-hmm. I wasn't good at it then. But I can see the difference from then to now. Mm-hmm. So because it's almost so common now, like. I think we talked about this before. Like your next door neighbor could be a stripper. Right. It's no excitement to it anymore. Yeah. It's not a secret. So it's not like back then it was, you had to go to the strip club to see that kind of stuff. I mean, you were seeing some stuff online, but it wasn't like. So you're saying now. OnlyFans kind of saturated that uh, the strip club world. It. Like you can still make your money or whatever. That's not really what the conversation is. It's about. The men just not really having, not even not to say a respect. It's more so like it's not exciting. Mm. Like it's too accessible. Men like to, you know, almost have a challenge or feel like they're doing a fantasy when they can see it all the time. It's right. not really a fantasy anymore. Like um, overstimulation, I guess that's how I would put it because you can see it online. Mm. You can 
almost walk outside, go to the club and see it at the regular club. Yeah. Then you go to the strip club. It's almost the same vibe there. It's no time for them to miss it, per mm. se. They can get it anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere, anytime. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, and just real quick, how you said uh, it's bec like, you know, men have become cheaper as far as paying out. Do you think inflation has anything to do with that? Has inflation oh, hit the strip clubs? Yeah, like definitely the inflation part about it. Um, people like trying to get themselves together. I heard it's starting to pick back up. So maybe people are getting adjusted to society right now. Um, but yeah, that was that had a lot to do with it. Um, and also just not having that, I guess, strip club respect or etiquette. You know what I'm saying? It was just kind of like, you a regular bitch like, type shit. Like, mm -hmm. I was tired of dealing with that kind of energy. So um, has that always been the case or has that been more so something like recently that you've been picking up? Um, I guess it's hard for me to say because I wasn't dancing that long. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just something I was tired of. Like, gotcha. I don't know what other women feel, but me personally, I was just tired of that energy. Like, yeah. and then also with dating, um, I kind of felt like, <laughs> was it hard to date you as, as you was a stripper? Was it hard to date? Do you think? Yes, because I was a stripper, but not for the reasons people might think it what? was more so like, <laughs> there you go take a deep breath Woo -sa. Yeah. okay okay yeah. so <laughs> all right it was kind of like if it didn't work out with us dating mm -hmm. like some guys i would just try to turn them into my trick i mean that's what they would become kind mm -hmm. of and i didn't like that i didn't mm -hmm. like you didn't like what you were becoming by doing that I don't think it was more so who I was becoming. Um, I wouldn't say I was becoming anything. I was just noticing my mindset. Mm. Like, oh, if you ain't going to take me on a date, you need to give me some money. Like, that was what was on my mind. Mm. Like, don't be asking me for shit and you ain't giving me no money. <laughs> so, okay. So, let's just... <laughs> Let me just try to, you know, help break it down. So basically what you were basically what you were saying um is that as you were dating while you were dancing, if you saw that it wasn't necessarily going anywhere, mm -hmm. you tried to turn it into the point where, okay, well shit, if we're not necessarily dating, it's not working out on that point, I at least want to get money from you as a trick. Exactly. Okay. So how did that work out? Oh, it would work it was working. Yeah. I just did not, it was working, but I just didn't like that I was even thinking that. Like, mm. bitch, anyway, get rid of him. Mm. <laughs> I didn't like that I was even thinking that, you know? So I'm not saying I was becoming anything because I'm very aware. Yeah. It was more so noticing where my mindset was going. Mm. Um, and so, um. I just felt like because I was more so, how can I put this? Um, oh, it was almost like depending on men for money. Yes, mm. I'm a dancer, but it's still coming from a man. Uh -huh. So I was just like, I don't, I'm sick of that. Of I'm, dependent on the man for money? Yeah, like I, I just I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. I just wasn't feeling it. Not saying like I love providers. It wasn't, that's not the energy though. It's more so like I'm out here trying to pay my bills off the sole fact that I got to convince this nigga that I'm worthy enough of him giving me his money. Whether so, it's the strip club, whether it's somebody mm -hmm. just on my just line. Just in general. So are you saying you were tired of that? And I asked because today. Yeah, I was tired of that. Because today, um, you know, that's like very publicized from women today as to the point where, you know, what whatever type of form it is, they're. They don't know what they're doing. Getting that's the why. money from uh, getting the money from men. Right. Because let's let's talk about it right quick. Right. The number one thing you see nowadays um, is the, you know, if you're in a relationship, who's paying the bills? Right. The 50 50 or 100 or 730 yeah. type display, right? I'm, I'm probably considered one of them women that feel like, like I said, I like providers. Mm -hmm. But that, that's what I mean. That's not the same thing as having a trick. Of course. 
Cause, cause as a provider, that's your man. That's someone that's. So women be trying to turn providers into tricks. That's the issue. Mm. <laughs> like, are they trying to turn tricks into providers as well, or is it just that one way? Um, I think they are trying to turn some tricks into providers. For instance, like, um, I be telling some of these girls. I'm in this one group, and you know, it'd be like younger girls that be with sugar daddies. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't like age gap relationships personally. I mean, that's y'all business. Right. If that's what y'all do, I don't like it. That ain't my business, but mm-hmm. I don't like it. So, um, I'm not against it when it's a transactional relationship though. Like if it's like she's 18 and she might be a dancer and she meets this older guy, and he wants to give her money for his time. Y'all know what it is up front that exactly. you're paying for you. and what good and what good she's providing. Exactly. It's very upfront. But these girls are start trying to like I've seen girls say like, oh, you know, he's 46 and I'm 21 mm-hmm. and I, I want to have kids and we have, like they'll start it. Oh, you know, we have a great time. He provides for me, blah, 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 blah. And I want to have kids. And like, bitch, this nigga is 46. He's probably not thinking about raising no babies. Yeah, he's past that. He's trying to have fun. Yeah, have a good time. That's it. So I'm not with it in that regard because they don't understand the dynamic. You're too, I don't want to say you're too young because some girls get it and they're not, you know, they not about to let an older dude trick them into thinking like this is some fantasy shit. Yeah. Like they know what their role is. I'm mm-hmm. here to give this man a good time and he's giving me money for having a good time with him yeah. or whatever. Because I mean, I know some men don't understand it, but a lot of guys be lonely, especially like times like this around the holidays, their wife might have died. You know, things like that. So those aspects, I was not against. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, that's cool. Like, some guys just need some companionship. That's all it is. And I was just watching. Have you ever seen the episode of Boondocks, uh, Guest Hoes Coming to Dinner, when they first introduced a pimp named Slickback and Granddad fell in love with a hoe? I don't know. Okay, so I was just watching the episode. And just to give you a brief rundown, Granddad, you know, he took in these two kids, Huey and Riley. Oh, yes. Yeah. I saw with the white girl. Yeah. Well, she, <laughs> she, was, she, was, she, was a, she was a she was a red bone that had okay. the blonde okay. hair. Okay, yeah, she had the blonde hair. Okay. But she was a hoe. And yeah. Granddad fell in love with her. And, like, he yep. was... Ve- Even that happens. Yeah, he was very... But the thing is, she was, like, putting the signs out there that she was a hoe. It was plenty red flags. But he was very <laughs> oblivious to it because he told his grandsons, like, y'all don't know what it's like to be old and lonely. Yeah. Right? So, yes. I mean, if you're at that point where, like, you're older, you're lonely, you don't give a fuck about, you know, any type of Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And speaking of that, mm-hmm. a lot of people been giving a lot of shit to Carisha and Diddy. And I'm like, bro, if y- this is a sugar daddy and sugar baby relationship. Yeah. They're not together for real exactly she wants what she and i mean this is what blows my mind about women because they be like <laughs> they trying to clown her because he's not doing certain things i guess that they feel like he's not hub- doing relationship shit towards and with her Thank so you you, you. I, I've, I've said the same thing you understand their dynamic from the woman's side and i get it from the man's side diddy is a fucking billionaire Thank he enjoys Carisha's time, company, and he energy. He loves her, literally. Yeah, and so. it's like a friendship. It's not how y'all trying to make it, yeah. oh, he got to respect her. He ain't about to marry her. He's nah. not disrespecting her. At yeah, all. facts. They're not about to get married. At They'll all. probably be friends for a long time. Yeah, like if they fucking, they fucking. She probably, she probably <laughs> rocking his fucking boots. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> giving him the time of his life. But still, that's fulfilling him mm-hmm. as far as, you know, he's not married. He doesn't have a girl. So he's, yeah. he's like that companion. His, his uh, last woman died. Died, yeah, yeah. Like he's <laughs> and, and from her, she's probably getting game. You think she's not getting game from Thank Diddy? You. Listen, this he didn't put her on his show. I mean, you know, like you know, uh, revolt. Been, yeah, revolt. Yeah, like she got her own show. She's listed as an executive producer with yeah. him. Yeah, she's promoting his liquor. Like it's a great dynamic. Yeah. And I wish, honestly, this is why I made a post one time, and people gonna hate this comment. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. <laughs> But I'm not going to lie. Hoes are the best wives. Not hoes like people look at like these women that... uh, This is going to sound bad, but this is the only way I know how to say it. Mm -hmm. Um, Fucking men for free. And what Mm -hmm. I mean by that is like they'll go fuck your friend just because they're mad at you. Emotional Mm -hmm. fucking. But a hoe is very calculated. And what I mean by hoe, like Carisha is a hoe. Mm -hmm. Cardi B was a hoe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... 
And admit people, to it. They admit to it. They admit to it. Yeah. Suki Hana. Yeah. She done had a ring about three times from the dude she was with. Mm. So it's not because... Let me tell you something about these these real hoes. Let's talk about it. Like I said, Suki Hana, Carisha. I don't really know if JT a hoe for real. She don't really give me real hoe vibes, but she also really, really into Uzi. You know yeah, what I'm and, he, so and, he's, and, he's, and he's and he's giving her a lot. He's uh, giving from, her from, a from lot. From a monetization standpoint. Let me tell you, I'm going to say we, because I ain't saying I'm a hoe per se, but I was a stripper. Mm -hmm. So I know the mindset. Right. We know what men like off rip because you got to... <sighs> I always say if a man give you his money, he saw some type of value in it, in mm. you. That mm -hmm. goes for stripping too. Mm -hmm. If a nigga at the strip club spending money on a bitch, he's either too drunk to know what he's doing or he really valued that one woman that he threw that money on or them five women. Like he really was like, oh yeah, these bitches deserve this. Yep. Like I'm giving it to them. Mm -hmm. Men don't just spend their money on Especially if they earned it, they're not about to just spend their money. A random on, on a chick for any random Facts. reason. So to me, Diddy's spending his putting money in Carisha pockets because she making him eat too. Mm -hmm. Period. He's not doing that shit for no reason. He's not putting her on his platform, putting her name on shit, putting her on his songs. He's not doing that for no reason. It's a value coming back. So we know how to multiply that money. We know how to cater to you, make you feel good as a man. We also know how to check you because we know our boundaries. When you're a dancer, people got this misconception that when you're a dancer or even a prostitute, mm -hmm. you don't have boundaries. They probably got more boundaries than the chick that you fucked at the club last week because at the end of the day, we know what to say no to and we know what to say yes to. At least the top notch ones. Yes, because some because the no, you know the, yes, the bottom of the barrel the bottom of the barrel they gonna do whatever exactly and those are the those are the girls I was saying don't know any better like mm. the girls that also out here trying to you know um, not necessarily strippers or dancers but like oh nigga you gotta give me money this and that like I be right. seeing these conversations and I just be like girl that is not how you do it yeah. like, <laughs> That's just not how you go about it. Like, you got to make a man feel like you're valuable mm. in order for him to even want to give you that. Because that'll all. make him come back around as opposed to if you're tricking, like literally tricking the mind of a man, mm -hmm. fooling him, you know, with smoking mirrors to give money to you. Then he's going to feel robbed and not want to come back. He's going to be like, damn, you. I just wasted my fucking money. I could have placed a parlay. Thank you. As opposed to if you're a top notch and you know your value, you know your boundaries yes. and you make that man feel special. He's going to yep. come back to it because you are giving him value like you Thank said you, Carisha does to Diddy. Yep. Carisha is probably adding years to Diddy's life to Diddy's life by making him feel youthful make Ooh. like cuz being lonely is depressing and that shit literally takes And he is so happy away. with her. Yeah. He is so happy with her and it just blows my mind how people can't see that dynamic. Well, because you know, everyone that's not in a relationship wants to talk about people that should be in one and point out that they're not people point out that people aren't in one. Mm -hmm. Because that's our insecurity. So you got men and women who, you know, um can't get wifed up or can't cuff nothing right. to save their life. So any chance they get to point and laugh at someone who's not getting cuffed up that right. you think they should be, they're gonna make fun of it. Exactly. But that's not the case. But you know, they they and just I don't understand the dynamics. Like facts. And I also feel like <laughs> I also feel like they don't understand because a lot of people are in trauma bonded relationships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't wanna leave that person. Because they have a bond with them and really it's a trauma bond. Or they're more worried about the title than the actual yes. uh, vibe and energy Facts. from the relationship. Like exactly. we said, you can tell they enjoy each other's company. But still, people want to point out the fact that there's no title on it. Yes. As opposed to you have a title with your girl or you have a title with your dude. But y'all are fucking toxic as yes. fuck towards each other. Yes. And you think y'all are in a better situation just because you have that <laughs> title. As opposed to these two who know what the, they understand yeah. what it is. And they get along great with each like, other. Like, oh my God, he just had a baby on her, this and that. What do you mean had a baby on, on her? her? It ain't on her. When the fuck did he ever propose to? <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's crazy. Seriously. Um, it is. So, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and transition to more so of a uh, festive uh festive topic if we would <laughs> um so like i said we're doing a christmas and new year's themed episode so we're going to go in chronological order starting with 
Christmas. Ooh. Um, first things first. What are your plans for Christmas? Are you spending it with the family? Are you uh, giving gifts? Like, what, what's going on for Christmas this year with Kiwi? Um, I am going to spend Christmas with my baby girl. That's um, adorable. <laughs> I took off work. Um, so I guess have like a four day weekend. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna spend it with her. And how how old is she? She just turned five, so her birthday was on the 11th. Perfect, just turned five. So let me ask you this: Um, do you currently tell your child at five years old about Santa? And if so, how long do you plan on telling your child about Santa? And if you do not tell your child about Santa, Santa currently, why don't you? I don't tell her about Santa. Okay. Um, but I do let her watch Santa movies and stuff like that. So has she ever asked, like, who's that man giving out the gifts and does he give gifts to me? No. I think she understands that it's a cartoon. Okay. Like, um, I really try to get her to understand that. Like, you're okay. just watching a cartoon. Mm-hmm. And I think she really gets that. Like, she, she'll she say, this is fake. She mm. She points that out, like... So this is pretend, that. like so, she knows. So what's the reason that you, from the rip, didn't want to tell her about Santa? Well, um, I don't, well, <laughs> I guess one reason is because when I was a kid, I used to really be obsessed with Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not even joking. First of all, Christmas was my favorite holiday. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved the lights and doing stuff with my family. And me and my brother would sleep by the Christmas tree the yeah. night before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like that was kind of our tradition. Um, and waking up really early, like five, six in the morning, opening gifts, having breakfast, spending it with our family and then doing our own thing. Yeah. Um, but when I tell you, I used to get sick because I was waiting for Santa Claus to come. Mm-hmm. So, Literally will wake up Christmas Day throwing up, can't open none of my gifts because I worried myself into sickness. Oh, you mean literally you would become ill? I would Ill. literally become ill. All right, so I'm trying to figure this out. So you would become sick. Would that would that come from like the stress of wanting to meet and eventually not ending up meeting Santa Claus? I think it was just really like thinking that Santa Claus was real and mm. almost obsessing over it, mm. like waiting, like thinking I'm seeing him outside. Yeah. yeah, like it was crazy. I would literally get sick. Like it's mm. insane. Yeah. Every like, almost for like, I had to be around like five because I remember I was in elementary school and I remember where I was living. So I had to be like five, maybe between like five and seven. And then eventually I realized Santa wasn't real because I started noticing like the gifts would still be in the same packaging and stuff like that. So I started coming up with it on my own. Like, okay. this isn't real. So then. you did the detective work and finding yeah. out that Santa wasn't real. <laughs> you know what? I honestly can't. I, I honestly don't even remember when I found out it wasn't mm-hmm. real. Um, but the reason why I asked if you told your daughter if Santa was real, because, you know, um, nowadays more so more parents tell their children that Santa isn't real yeah. for whatever reason. I think the most common reason is because they want to give credit to this person for the money that they're spending mm-hmm. to get their child to give. But I will say this, and I was just talking with somebody right uh, about this. My holiday spirit now, it's okay. But when I've been when I believed in Santa and when I just had that, you know, very festive holiday spirit, I mean, it was at an all time high. Yeah. Like as far as, you know, you could barely sleep and just, I know. you know, getting like we used to throw like reindeer food like in yes. the in, outside out front of the crib it's for, so cute, for the right? reindeer. Right. And that just really filled you. It just truly filled me with joy. Um, but then when I when I found out Santa was real, Christmas was good as far as spending it with family. But on that end, it definitely fizzled out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I've just. I think um I think also for me I I seen one of those posts a few years ago about how um you know telling kids like Santa bought a PS5 and mm. other kids wondering why they didn't get a PS5 if okay. they asked for it. Yeah. Stuff like that. Also I'm not going to say it's about my religion. I'm not religious at all. Mm. But when I stopped becoming religious, I think everything that I was just like researching kind of made me not get into that too. Yeah. Her dad isn't, I don't think he really got into holidays until she was born. Okay. Like, I don't even know. 
I mean, he's definitely getting her stuff for Christmas. Yeah. But I don't know what he's doing. Like, he probably has no tree up at his house or anything mm. like that. Um, but I love Christmas, so I do have up a tree. I have up some decorations. Yeah. Um, I, I watch the Christmas movies with her and stuff like that. I just plan to do that, watch some Christmas movies with her, make some Christmas cupcakes. I just want her to be in reality yeah, more okay. than anything. So that makes sense. So just everything outside of the whole Santa Claus thing is still, yes. is still there. You're still, you know, doing all of the festive things, yes. whether it's, you know, gingerbread house, right. making cookies, watching yep. the Christmas movies. It's just not per se the actual living Santa Claus is exactly. real. That's it. Exactly. Okay. The living Santa Claus is yeah. not real. Yeah. But you can watch Santa Claus on yeah. TV yeah. and <laughs> you know, she's never been like I mean, but kids are so unpredictable because as they get older, I guess they do start questioning things more. Mm -hmm. But you don't really think about that as you have them. You're thinking like at two and three, they're probably going to ask you about Santa. Yeah. Like, I don't know. She might ask me this year, like, mm -hmm. oh, is Santa Claus going to come? And mm -hmm. then I'm going to have to be like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we try to really, I feel like we try to be very realistic with her. Nice. Okay, I like it. I respect that to the fullest. Yeah. Um. Okay, so this is figuratively. Well, well. before we go on to, uh -huh. you know, what are you doing for Christmas? Oh, good question. <laughs> Very good question. So this year for Christmas, uh, what did uh Money Mike say on Friday night? I'm going to get drunk and watch The Grinch. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. Um, I'm going to get drunk and watch Bad Santa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, The Grinch is hilarious, though. It is. Definitely one of I the top. Wa I watched the Grinch the other day for the first time in probably like 15 years. It was hilarious. I was it? fucking dying <laughs> laughing. I watched it like last week. I was like, this is too funny. Jim Carrey absolutely bodied it. And bodied that's it. the same thing for when I watched Bad Santa. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Santa, um, I know, you know, Santa is real per se. But right. still, I want to ask you, what what did you ask for Santa for this year? Oh, I asked Santa to let me make it to the new year with my bills paid. Ooh. <laughs> and he did it, Lord. He did it. <laughs> this, yo, this inflation is kicking Ooh, ass. Ain't it? Oh, God. I am so grateful. You have no idea. I almost want to cry right now because. <laughs> If I get a fucking if if can can you imagine if someone paid your rent for Christmas said Listen. you know what I'm gonna pay your rent that'll literally be the greatest gift I could possibly ask for because like I said this inflation is kicking ass not to mention you know a uh, couple parlays done kick my ass too but that's hey, that's exactly. neither here nor there that is neither here nor there but literally that's what I asked for though I was like I gotta make it to the new year with my bills paid if mm -hmm. I can do that. I will be so grateful. And yeah. I did it, man. I did it. Listen, Kiwi, I 100% feel that. 100%. <laughs> I did it. And I could still get my baby a couple things for Christmas. So Nice. Nice. Exactly. Um, I would, So if if my, my dog is back in Maryland, but if she were here, I would have up a Christmas tree. I would get gifts. Um, I don't have a Christmas tree up. I was wondering where the dog was. Yeah, yeah. Where, she, where? She's, because at work, around this time of year, it gets very busy where I work very long days. Okay. And my mom spoils her and is in her face. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I figure instead of her being here by herself, she can go and bug my mom. That's cute. But the only thing is, um, everyone over there spoils her, so she gets out of character. <laughs> so by the time I get her back, after snap her back into character. Yeah, fact. Because she is very much so, if you give her an inch, she's taking a mile. Yeah, right. That's Desi. People try to say animals are not like kids, but I do not agree. A hundred percent they are. That is exactly how my daughter acts if she goes with somebody too long. Yes. It the, comes back to me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm and, and just very sneaky. So they are very much like kids. Um, Absolutely. Okay, so let's say you're asking Santa for your bills uh, to be taken care of, which they have been. Let's say, you know, before they even got there, you're asking Santa for this. And Santa asks you, all right, Kiwi, I hear you, but let me ask you something. <laughs> Were you naughty or nice this year? <laughs> Ooh, I was naughty this year. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <sighs> That's why I had to switch it up. <laughs> okay. I was definitely naughty this year. I definitely... I've been doing shit that I should not have been doing, to be honest. Now, you don't have to go into crazy detail about anything you don't want to. I have not gone into detail. <laughs> but just to keep it broad, Ooh. why do you think you were naughty this year as opposed to nice? 
I did things that I know I shouldn't have been doing. Mm. That's just it. I yeah. just was doing stuff that I was like, bitch. But it was mostly just out of trying to survive. Money. Yeah. Green piece of paper. It sounds like you're at a point now, though, where you kind of <laughs> stepped back from yourself, mm. saw the situation, analyzed it, and corrected yourself on it. So yeah. it sounds like you're not currently still living in that state now. I'm not. So um, how did you how did you uh you know correct those habits that you saw as naughty? I knew that I was doing a lot of things out of survival mode. Mm -hmm. Um and I was just like, girl, you gotta switch it up. Like I know you don't I I know you don't want a nine to five, but if you keep dancing and you know, trying to make ends meet, then you're gonna keep being in survival mode and mm. like trying to find all these ways to get money. And you know, I felt like that that was one of the main things. Like, I gotta get out of this survival mode and mm. at least meet my needs. That way, anything I do outside of that could be like, um, it, it it doesn't contribute to your surviving. It's, yes. it's just you living at that point. Absolutely, because yeah. like stuff like doing yoga, it made yeah. me not want to do yoga because mm. I was trying to use it to compensate for money that I didn't have. Okay, and it was making it not fun. Yeah, you know. So that was one of the things um, that helped me change it, and just also um, I went to church, Good. and I was getting some messages there i'm not religious but mm -hmm. i just felt like that would help just being in a different type of environment yeah at least getting some type of spiritual guidance yes. i don't think you have to be all the way religious to get spiritual healing absolutely from church from and the, the first time yeah. i went i really was in there crying yeah like oh, yeah for real it's deep it was deep yeah. i was really in there crying like it was absolutely what I needed. So I just think I needed to forgive myself for not being myself. Mm -hmm. um, understand that I was trying to survive and get out of that mindset and just understand that I can live and get my needs met and still do the things I enjoy. Yeah. Um, and I just been wanting to do better. I really have. Good. And the dancing ain't got nothing to do with that because I could still dance. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I need people to understand. Nah, that. it sounds. I have no shame. It sounds dancing. like it's a deeper situation than just Absolutely. dancing. It sounds like <laughs> you just really took a uh, you took accountability towards just the way you were moving overall, not just dancing, yes. just overall. And you felt like you know it was to the point where um, you were relying on too many things that weren't yes. necessarily the most positive things in life. Exactly. So right. you had to switch it up and get to the point where you were in control of everything mm -hmm. and the spare time that you had, instead of using that towards trying to contribute towards yes. being in survivor mode, you contributed that time towards just living instead yes. of surviving, right. enjoying life, exactly. not having to live stress uh, stressful the whole 24 hours of the yeah, day. Yeah, because there was a lot of times where like I would want to go out but I couldn't because I was thinking about how can I make money? Yeah. Like, I can't go out and I don't have no money. Instead of enjoying life. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I can't. I just, so too many times that happened this year. Yeah. Way too many times. I didn't like that. You're, you're definitely not alone as far as, mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people were very reckless with money this year but yeah. the thing that made it bad why so many people were reckless with money is because like we said we're in an inflation right now yes i don't think they officially declared it in an inflation but we are definitely i mean you could tell by the inflation. grocery prices everything has fucking <laughs> skyrocketed everything and it's ridiculous the i mean uh, some game leaves be like almost two dollars now I don't smoke, but I'd even uh, anymore. But I even know that those were yeah. ninety nine cent at one they point. They were ninety nine cent. They're like two dollars now. You want to know the ultimate test to see if we're in an inflation? If Arizona's aren't ninety nine cent anymore, I bet they're not. They're probably like a buck twenty five. You're right. <laughs> they risen. Um, I don't know about the Arizonas, but the Dollar Tree is definitely a dollar twenty five. Yeah, it right ain't now. a Dollar Tree no more. Exactly. Yo. And they even got stuff in there for five dollars. Oh now. yeah. 
I saw that. I was like, wait, is this five below or the Dollar Tree? What yeah. are we doing? Yeah. I mean, a lot of things, like, I've been noticing, like, definitely that, though. When I go shopping for stuff, I'm like, what in the world? Like, mm. I seen some little Debbie cakes that was, like, almost $5. Yeah, it's crazy. So, um, a lot of people were very reckless with their money on top of the fact that we're in an inflation. Yeah. And, uh, and they, you know, in an inflation and shit i think recession but it wasn't necessarily declared a recession uh definitely mm -hmm. declared inflation let me correct myself from what i was saying earlier definitely declared inflation but not recession so um you know all of that stuff it, it definitely contributes and it's it's, it's very you know kind of hitting us from a blind side to where it's taking everyone over absolutely okay so good it sounds like you were you know self-realization from being naughty it sounds like at least you're ending the year more so on the nice side oh, so yes. i don't know maybe santa will forgive you for <laughs> You know, uh, kind of coming I to hope realization. So, but with... you know what? I don't know because I feel like I just got punished at work mm. because we had a secret Santa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I brought my secret Santa's gift. Everybody uh -huh. got their gifts, and my secret Santa didn't even come to work. Ooh. <laughs> I'm I'm so I'm in a similar situation, except for I was the fortunate one. So, we played, you ever played White Elephant? The gift yeah. exchange. I mean, I haven't played it, but I know what it is. It's a great fucking game. I love it. <laughs> we played it at work um, in our meeting, but I didn't even know we were playing it and had to bring a gift. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, God. So I told her, like, oh, my bad. I ain't bringing nothing. Oh, my um, God. But someone, you know, brought it extra and bailed me out or whatever. So the gift that I chose was, I cho it was like a, it was some type of kit basket thing. I chose it because they said... It has a canteen in it. Now, I don't know what the fuck a canteen is, but I thought it was a flask. <laughs> I thought it was something that I could it put. It sounds like a flask. Right. I was like, perfect <laughs> for this. I could have put it in this pocket right yeah. here. I, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was a coffee mug. So they said canteen, but it was a coffee mug. So I picked it. Like, this is a coffee mug. This I want to be like white people. But... I, don't even, I, don't even drink, I don't even drink coffee. What are you, what are you... Canteen. Canteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Damn like, canteen. Listen, I heard canteen. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> I got me a little personal flash for the yeah. Okay, oh bet. I, I, I feel like a black person would have said a fucking mug. <laughs> we would have said it's a goddamn coffee mug. Facts. <laughs> I picked that bitch up because I stole it from somebody. I picked that bitch up. I'm like, this is a, and I already picked it up. It was mine. Like, this is a fucking coffee mug. Oh shit, fuck it. <laughs> we'll just we'll just wrap it up and and throw it in the next white elephant game. You know how that go. Oh God, that's hilarious. All right, so let's do this, right? Um, we're still in the Christmas uh, time. So we're going to come up with top five Christmas movies. And how we're going to do this is to start, I think it's easy to have. We have to come up with it collectively. I'll have two. You have two. We have to both agree on, on, the, last one. on the last one. Okay, okay. All right, so. What if you choose one I want to choose? Then we'll, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll run it from there. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So, ladies first. Ladies first, okay. you go ahead. Give us your, uh, give us two uh, to go on the top five list. Oh, two? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm definitely going with The Grinch with Jim Carrey. Hands down. Hands down. Okay. Um, Friday After Next. Mm, okay, so that was going to be one of mine. All right, <laughs> okay, so see? Okay. We done, we done. Okay, all right. Friday After Next. All right, so let's just, let's just scratch the rules. We're going to come up with Okay, so you got Grinch. You got Friday After Next. I have to throw Bad Santa in there. Okay, I like Bad Santa. That is hands down my favorite Christmas <laughs> movie of all time. I don't know people like Bad Santa. No, what about like Polar Express and Grinch? Ew. Listen, Bad Santa and Grinch will have me dying laughing the whole way through. I love mm -hmm. to laugh, so we got Bad Santa. Okay, so we got Grinch, Friday After Next, and Bad Santa. Okay. We got two more. You choose one. How you feel about Home Alone? I just I, watched Home Alone. I, I enjoyed it. Home Alone? I mean, I seen it when I was younger, but I watched it with my daughter recently, and it was... That's another one I haven't seen in years. Yeah. So we go with Home Alone? Yeah, we go with right. Home Alone. So we're going to throw Home Alone on there. Cool. So we got four. We got a spot for one more. I'll let you go ahead and close this one out. What you thinking? You're not going to like the one I choose, because it's... <sighs> I don't want to say it's a white movie, but well, I mean, it's you, like a you, chick flick. It's called Just Friends. Just Friends. Is Have that the movie with, uh, don't tell me, is that Justin Timberlake? No, not Justin Timberlake. The guy that plays, he played a superhero that was kind of like, oh God, I can't think. But he was like fat in the movie in the beginning. Oh, you're talking about Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, is that his name? Ryan Reynolds. Well, he was chubby. Yeah, then he became like an executive yeah. producer at a yeah. studio or something. I love that movie. That's a good Christmas movie? I love that movie. Okay, I haven't seen it. I love that movie. I'll take your word. I don't know if you're going to like it. 
<laughs> well, listen, you 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 hit the you hit the nail on the head with Friday after next and mm-hmm. the Grinch. So I mean, I'm I'm assuming it's like that a chick flick. Though. It's a chick flick. It's a chick flick. But, so is but, it a, is it a funny chick flick or is it, it just? It is. Okay. It's a funny chick flick. I like funny chick. It's flicks. a chick flick. Yeah, right. it's definitely a funny chick flick. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's white characters in it. So. so go with that. Let's go ahead and <laughs> recap it. So we have the Grinch. We have Friday After Next. We have Bad Santa. We have Home Alone, and we have Just Friends. Just Friends. Okay. okay. But I feel like we can do better than Just Friends, though. All right, scratch Just Friends off. What do we got? <laughs> um, I'm gonna let's... just I'm gonna just name some that I honestly I haven't even seen these, but a lot of people talk about. It. A lot of people talk about A Christmas Story with Ralphie. No. Um, Elf. Uh, I like Elf. This Christmas. <gasps> oh, I got it. What is it? What's the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and? That is it right there. So I've never seen that one. Let's see. That movie is it. Um, when they try to get the toy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> so I've never seen that one, but I keep hearing. Let's see. So you're talking about Jingle All the Way. I love that movie. I haven't seen it, but I've, I've heard great things about <gasps> see it. See what it streams on. I got to watch that. Right now it just says YouTube. Wow, really? Uh, stars comedy. Um, that's all I'm seeing right now. Wow. Amazon. Okay. Uh, Hulu. Okay, it's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Oh my god, I gotta watch it. It's on Hulu. Okay. I love that movie. Oh, I, I like that one. I've heard, <laughs> like I said, I've heard great things about you the movie. You gotta okay? watch that. So we have Bad Santa, Friday at the Next, Grinch. Home Alone and Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way. I think that's a great fucking that's list. That's a great list. It is. Good job. That is a great good list. Good job. That was a good one. That was a good one. Good job. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. That was a great list. All right. So, um, you know what? Let's stay on the Christmas vibe. Okay. Pick one only. Okay. What is the Black Christmas Anthem, only one. Silent Night by, by Temptations. The Temptations. See, that's why I fuck with you. Like I'm stuck with you, Kiwi. <laughs> that's why I fucks Silent with you. Silent Night. When my man came on there, <laughs> Silent Night. Merry I forgot Christmas about him, right? From the Temptations. <laughs> that is that banger. Yeah. Oh, wow, I'm so glad you said also, that. Also, Santa Claus is coming to town by the Jackson Jackson Five. Five? Yeah, that's another band. I'm surprised you didn't say Mariah Carey or the uh, Beyonce Christmas joint. Nah, but Mariah Carey, I'm surprised you didn't say I Mariah Carey. I love Mariah Carey though. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. that is my girl. Yeah. I listen to Mariah Carey a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you know, a lot the queen of retail Christmas music. She is, but that's probably why I don't like it. Mm. I love the Temptation Silent Night though. Me too. That's my favorite. I wish I could hit them notes right now. I can sing, but that's I'm a little my lit. <laughs> so this is a very random do you want to give it a shot? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> this is a very random song, but I only know it because my grandfather used to play it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who sings it, but it used to go, um fat daddy, la 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 la. I'm Santa Claus. Whoa, whoa, yeah. If anybody knows that, please. I don't know message or comment because i feel like every it's been 20 years now that i've been trying to relay that song to people no one else knows it so if you know it just please let me know you might have to google it yeah i'm gonna look it up but it's um, another song i really like um it's not a black christmas song though but i I wish i could think how it goes um oh my god i hear it in the stores all the time i love that song and i have to give a shout out to run dmc what is it christmas in highlands i think it's called um that's a classic Christmas song yeah. as well. I, I, but the hip hop you know, joint. Yeah, but nothing mm-hmm. beats Temptation Silent Night. In nothing my opinion. beats Temptation Silent Night. Nothing. 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 All right. So, um, followed right by Christmas is New Year's. Uh man, we are already at twenty twenty three. I can't believe it. I remember lockdown, quarant- I know, quarantine. Right? Like it was. Ma- it feels like it was maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah. Was, I, it, it was it was definitely about a year and a half ago. It was, was 2020. Three years ago. That is insane. Yeah, that's true. We're coming up on three years from quarantine. Because it happened. Like February. My birthday's in March. 
I know it was the same week because yeah. um, they started sending us home from work like this, the week after my birthday, which was mm. like the 12th, 15th, something yeah. like that. So, yeah. It's about to be three years. That's crazy. I'm glad it's over. Yeah, me too. Well, they Ooh. say it's like slowly. It, it, it makes its it makes its reappearance every here exactly. and there, but it's nothing. Right now, the flu's going around real yeah, bad, so yeah, it ain't it even is. really cold. And pneumonia. Yeah, which especially is so with the crazy. kids. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let me ask you: Do you have a New Year's resolution? Hmm. Um. I wouldn't say a resolution. I just have goals that I want to accomplish next year. There you go. Um, definitely want to write a book. Mm. I want to work on my own podcast. Kiwi Talk Too Much. Kiwi Talk Too Much. Kiwi Talk Too that Much. That is a great fucking name. <laughs> Any way I can help, you already know. Let me know. Absolutely. Ouch. I might have to rent out your space. Man, I got you. I'm, I'm going to do it up a little bit more, too. <laughs> no, facts. For mm. real. Because I, I want to do, definitely do that. Like, mm -hmm. that is, absolutely. Um, YouTube, um... But, you know, I have Amazon journals and I got a coloring book. So I want to promote that more. Um, I signed up to do taxes. So I want to do taxes this year. I've been trying to get into that for a long time. You are a woman of many hats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what's up. I really am. And I'm trying to align myself a little better. I feel like I'm on the right path because I really do love finance. Like, I love working at the bank. Mm -hmm. Um I'm really good with taxes <clears throat> solely because I used to work for myself. So I learned a lot of mm. tips on doing your taxes. Um, I'm sure there's more I could learn. So that's what I'm trying to do yeah. this year coming up. I already signed up through the IRS. So like I can do them. Let me just say this real quick. Don't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, you laying out all the things you're trying to get at on top of the things that you have done in the past or do now um to uh generate you know revenue um i was having a discussion with somebody and it was, and we were talking about just you know who's really getting to the bag out here right. and i gotta give props to women man like women today <laughs> are just getting I to agree. that fucking bag in so many fucking ways yeah. like not just one not just being a secretary somewhere i mean even if a woman does have a nine to five there's so many side hustles that they're doing mm -hmm. that y'all are doing out here or you know it's a lot of women entrepreneurs that are getting Absolutely. to it and it's just so many different lanes and i just got to give y'all y'all flowers because i recognize yeah. it yeah you know and I mean? also i want to say like when i was dancing i met a lot of girls that were doc um like nurses mm -hmm. or worked in the emergency room yeah they're in school to be a lawyer um, like dancing was not just what they did. Like right. that was like the side thing. Some yeah. women do do it full time, which I don't think anything is wrong with that. Right. Um, especially when you know what you're doing. But for the most part, a lot of the women were like <clears throat> really doing something with themselves mm -hmm. outside of just dancing. Yeah. So. A lot. Y'all are getting to it. So I just had to give that. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So that's a good new year's resolution. Just, you know, being more, uh, straight path narrow path towards your goals yes and like, what i what i typically do every year is have like a theme um so this year my theme was supposed to well i guess i did um but my theme was um that song i'm on a new level mm -hmm. i'm on a new, new level, level. Yeah, you're was, leveling up yeah so um, i feel like that's what i did so since you like that song let me make a suggestion leveling up by fabulous and dave east Fabulous and Davies. Leveling oh, you know up. what? I like Davies. Yeah. I'll listen to that. Leveling up. I mean, it's essentially the same concept, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I just, I like that uh, leveling up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So next year, I think mine is going to be, um, like I said, I'm just trying to become better. Yeah. Um, Like a better person than I was this year. Not saying I was a terrible person or nothing. I just feel like... I could do a lot better. I can give back. I just want to, <laughs> I want to cleanse myself of my sins. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. I mean, well, and, and let me just say this, as far as when I asked you New Year's resolution, you said, you know, trying to obtain certain goals. So mm -hmm. the resolution was more so, uh, I think that's most people's resolutions is a goal that they're trying to get to, but more so the resolution has something to do with 
uh, a characteristic and mindset change yes. that they have to make happen in order for them to reach it. Absolutely. And I, and I say that because I'm just thinking of my New Year's resolution, which is to get to a certain goal with uh, with day by day, as far as from YouTube yeah. and from the audio podcast yeah. and um, affiliate marketing and whatnot. And mm-hmm. it's just more so has to do with this, the the changes in my mindset and my characteristics and my mannerisms Absolutely. that I have to make in order to get to it. I completely agree with you. Like I plan to put myself in new environments next year. Mm-hmm. I've even been taking my daughter to plays. Like I'm really trying to switch it up. Not saying like, I, I, I just want to be more authentic me and I want to learn myself more so that I can give to other women. Yeah. I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right. Um, let me ask you this. <clears throat> What's something that black people should leave in the year 2022? (laughs) I think black people should leave victim mindsets in 2022. Break that down. First of all, being on social media, um, I see a lot of people try to force victimhood on specifically women. Mm. I see them really forcing victimhood like... I might share something and I mean, I don't, we all go through things, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, I go through stuff. I complain. I cry about shit. Mm -hmm. I I complain about the same thing over and over sometimes. Um, But also being a victim gets you nowhere, especially when people are like, oh, we're oppressed and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yes, that has happened. And There are things still happening, but I think it's so crazy how we'll say um, all these other races get over on us. Mm. Why do you think that is, though? Because we're being victims. We're not standing in strength and in um, community. Like, we're not standing together and saying we can get through this shit. We're just like... Oh, it's happening. It's happening. And just bending over, taking it. We can literally (laughs) fucking black people can literally take over the world. Thank you. If we're just talking about black Americans, Mm -hmm. we could easily take over this country. Not in an evil, diabolical way. No facts. I'm just saying like just if we stop the victimhood. Seriously. If we stop like, well, it's happening to us because of this. Okay, take that knowledge. And figure out what to do with it next. Yeah. Stop the victim Because I, I, I see what you're saying. Because that victim mindset is was literally keeping us down. Thank you. We're like, well, shit, I can't, I can't get it's nowhere. There's nothing but, I can yeah, do about it. I can't like, go come nowhere on, because man. I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, we are. We can come literally on. take and then, over the world. And then it's crazy because we'll we'll say <laughs> we'll we'll do this victim shit, and then we'll say nobody's there for us in certain aspects because you don't. I mean, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Why should someone be there for you? What are you trying to do? Where are you trying to go? Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that the white man did this and that. If you're my man as a black man, I need you to go out here and figure out how the fuck the white man can't do it to you Mm -hmm. or how to play the game so you can win. And I feel like if I can do it, your ass can do it. I like that one. Uh, My answer for... As far as what black people should leave in 2022, it's kind of a two part. I would say is to not uh, giving out so much free game and and become more so uh, producers than consumers. Amen. That kind of ties in. Um, So what I mean by not giving out so much free game, think about how many times this year and years in the past, but I really noticed it this year with two instances where... We kind of create the narrative with something on social media, on Twitter. We create a trend. We create something that's, you know, going viral or something. And then the next thing you know, um, it it gets in the wrong hands and it's, it's turned to something that's just straight uh, a, a money grabber. Absolutely. What I'm, what I'm speaking of in particular is Taylor Port, the wine. Yeah. Right? Black people, we've been, the first time I drank Taylor Port was in 2014 in college. Listen. 
listen, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that long ago for me, but I'm like, this shit been out for a long time. For a minute. It's Even cheap. stuff like Lunazole. I've yeah. been drinking Lunazole. Yeah. So, <laughs> and remember how we did it with Capricio. So, we, we take something and we blow it up. And we give it out as free game to someone to come, and when y'all know what I mean by someone to come and grab it and mm-hmm. monetize off of it towards us only. Yes. I saw something that uh, it was a club that had Taylor Port, which is a thirteen dollar fucking bottle. Yeah. They had it in the club I used to for like a buck fifty. Sh- that's crazy. Yeah. Taylor Port. Taylor Port in the club for like hundred. When I first drank it, that shit was eight ninety nine. It's cheap as fuck. You get the we would get we would get the big ass jug. Thank you for um thirsty Thursday thirsty Thursdays in college. Uh, shout out to Cope and Leek, <laughs> my roommates, my first roommates in college out in Monroe in New York. We would put like three dollars together, get the big ass jug, freeze it, and that's what we would just sip on that yeah. all Thursday for thirsty Thursdays. But that's just an example of, you know, just we're so quick to kind of put something out there for someone else to grab and take and run with it and then, you know, bless you. Thank and you. to monetize off of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're we're just so quick to consume something rather than produce something and turn that out on our Absolutely. own. You know what I'm saying? That and happened with Black Lives Matter. Black we Lives Matter. created it, and then the white people bought it and... Took that shit and ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's crazy about you saying that? I was mm-hmm. thinking earlier today, like, why do people get... Why do black people get offended when we see, like, things... I mean, obviously, we can tell, like, a white person is advertising it because it's very stereotypical yeah. what they're advertising. Very direct. Um, But it's like we ask to be recognized, and then when these white companies try to recognize us we're we're like kind of offended i think it's because we have great ideas but we don't act towards it i agree but yeah no just giving the audience what they want that's big and that's also what i'm working towards in the new year because i have so many i i do okay with as far as putting out content with day by day i do okay Mm -hmm. i don't do nowhere near what i should and i know this this is why Mm -hmm. you know i I know i'm trying to you know take steps to improve that as far as putting out content every day or at least three four times a week on youtube um because i'll have an idea yeah right i'll have an idea of day by day of a certain video topic a certain discussion topic right i'll have an idea and I'll make up an excuse and not do it. Yeah. Three days later, white, black, whatever, I see somebody with that same idea, Me put it out. Too. And what do I do instead of taking accountability and saying, man, you fucked up. You slipped up and someone else took it. Instead, I'd be like, man, look at this motherfucker biting me. What you mean biting me? They don't even know me. <laughs> How they biting me? They don't even know me. They, no didn't, facts. they didn't know that I was thinking that. So I get upset about that. I'd be like, that. oh, they stole my yeah. idea. They didn't steal your idea. They don't, exactly. Instead of the fact of taking accountability and saying, yeah. you knew when you wanted to put it out but you didn't put and it you out didn't then put it out and someone else came across and you know and i really strongly believe that when you have an idea and you don't act on it you put it out put there it out. for somebody else to think absolutely. of it absolutely i you're, really believe you're not going to be the first and last person to think of something yes nah. and and you put that energy out there and it didn't get a chance to grow on anything so yeah. it went to somebody Somewhere else. else yeah that's a I great really point believe that. that is a great point all right, so what we're going to do to close this episode off, the cherry on top. We have some awards to get to give <laughs> out for the year 2022. All right. So the first one we're going to start with, which is, you know, a pretty common one, is the album of the year. All right. So Kiwi, okay. who are you giving album of the year to in the year 2022? I really want to give album of the year to Kendrick, even though... I haven't listened to his album, but I mm-hmm. love Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. I'm never gonna doubt his abilities mm-hmm. and the fact that he even dropped. Mm-hmm. First of all, it's been a minute. The fact that he even dropped makes yeah. it album of the year. Yeah. Period. <laughs> so <laughs> That's no how other. I feel. Okay, so you know what? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tag team this one because you didn't listen to it, but I did. I've listened to okay. that album. It is so the first time I even heard that I was driving on my way from Charlotte to Maryland and my brother's like, Yo, you didn't this is weeks after it dropped. Yeah. I'm just the type I just wait for things to die down. I'm like, I'm away. He's like, nah, listen to it now. Me too. I'm I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. And I played it and I was like, This is fucking amazing. Okay. Prior to Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, and probably still is, my favorite Kendrick album is Damn. But Mr. Morale I love Damn. Mm-hmm. Oh, but Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers has a completely different approach from Damn. Yeah. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is very vital to 
everyone, but more specifically black people in the mindset mm -hmm. that we have now. Because is is he emphasizes you know therapy, he emphasizes you know okay. accountability, uh, parent issues, whether it's daddy issues, mommy issues, whatever. It's just okay. a lot of that going on in that. It's not damn where it's just great songs or shit that's yes. like oh this is my shit. It's some shit that will actually make you tear up. Wow. It can really hit that I gotta deep. listen. You know what? Before the year ends, I'm gonna listen to it. Please do. I mean it's Before a Before the year ends. A, I've heard like three songs. I heard that toxic song. Yeah. With him and the girl. Yeah, and that's cool. It's yeah. a great beat. It's a good storyline to it, but that's still it's not just a storyline, yeah, right? That's not um, the epitome of that. And album. I know that. And yeah. I and that's what I know. And I also the reason why I do kind of like that I didn't like the song per mm -hmm. se because it was a, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. But I get what he was doing. With yeah. That. So you know, you know, it's so one of my favorite songs on Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is, is is called, uh, damn, um, Rich Interlude. Okay. Which is Kodak reciting a poem. Okay. And that shit is fucking great. I need to hear it. Like Kodak narrated that album. Um, okay. But he, it's the rich interlude where he recited a poem, and that shit is is basically like you know speaking of uh, a young black kid growing up in the streets in America. Okay. Now I'm not a street nigga, but I definitely felt that poem whole wholeheartedly. I feel like even with black men not being street niggas, they still have to have. Um, you I'm not. I'm not saying they have to have this. What What I'm saying is, no matter what, y'all still gotta have the street mentality, or you gotta be prepared like a street dude because y'all never not, know what. If yeah. not, you'll get finessed out here. I was about to simple say that. that. It's yeah. that simple. I'm not a street nigga, but I always had like a, a a hustler's mindset, and I know how to operate in certain street manners. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? or so like I, protecting yourselves and having a gun, yeah. and like just having to watch y'all back mm -hmm. i just personally feel like even if they're not a street dude they still have to kind of know the like mannerisms that. yes yeah 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 i've, I've never and that I've, makes me sad for y'all to be honest like well <laughs> again see it goes down to how many men grew up without a father figure absolutely you know what i'm saying so how many men come from generational trauma yeah. where they were only learned from one side and not the other yeah, right luckily i didn't have my father but i had father figures that yes. were able to teach me these things yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I if I enter a room, if I sit down at a restaurant, I'm never sitting with my back towards the entrance. Yeah, right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, That's what I mean. Yeah, it's, That's exactly what I mean. But but again, not everyone is able to learn that because they didn't have someone to teach that to yeah, them. Yes, right. So, you know, And as a woman, that. I just feel like certain things we we don't think like men. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. Well, well, y'all not really supposed to. It's we're 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 supposed to for one protect y'all mm -hmm. and for two put y'all on game exactly so, and that's that's exactly like, what I, I don't mean. I don't expect a woman I'm dealing with to have the same mentality I have as far as the move yeah you know what I'm saying I I approach it as I'll you know act on it towards her for one and then I'll put her on to certain yes. shit towards two right um for two in case like I'm not around or you know Absolutely. what I'm saying so maybe it right. all right so we got a little off track okay so we're giving Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is your 2022 album of the year. Album of the year. Lock it. All right. So next, let's go with, and this is given, this is going to be awarded to an individual person. Let's go with come up of the year. Come up of the year. Who you got? I got Glorilla. Glor oh, that is great. She did it. Exploded. Exploded. Yeah. Yeah. And mind you, I seen her um make a comment about the first six months of this year. She her and her friends agreed that they were gonna like detox. Mm -hmm. And um I mean this is what I read. Mm -hmm. This is what I read that she said her and her friends were going to detox and um they weren't gonna drink, mm -hmm. they weren't gonna date any guys, they were gonna go to the gym, and it was like some other thing. And they were going to do that for six months. And she said on her six months, that's when she dropped Fuck Nigga Free and blew up. Wow. That's what she said. That's that's amazing. I it, think it was eating better too, something like that. But yeah, they made a commitment and she said she did it. And, and on it the six off. months. And she, I mean, from June to now, look it's at where she is. Amazing what that girl Fucking has done. Fucking amazing. And, and everybody was talking shit about her when she dropped that fuck nigga yeah, free song. Yeah. And she just, I started hearing it on the radio. I said, oh my God, yeah. this bitch blowing up. She, and, and, and two <laughs> things. One, she can actually spit. 
She can spit. She, she can has amazing spit. music. Yeah. And then for two, um, she, I don't, you can just kind of sense that she has a great mindset yes. into the way that she's approaching things. Absolutely. You know I agree with her. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. Like, she's very, she know what she doing. Yes. I, I think, I just pick up, she has good vibes for one, which makes sense that you said the whole detox thing, because you can kind of sense yes. that. She's not just, uh, you know, loose and raunchy out here uh -huh, with it. Uh -huh. And then for two, um, I pick up a very great hustler spirit from her. Yes, absolutely. You know and I mean? she's very generous and smart. Like she was talking about how she hasn't even spent the money that she got from her contract. Mm. Um, you know, like I just feel like she really is just genuinely her. Yeah. And I and that's why I fuck with the fact that she did a song with Cardi B because I, I love Cardi B. I feel like she's so her yeah like, it can't get no realer yeah cardi cardi <laughs> cardi saw it as well so she you know absolutely she would have been a sucker not to pass that down absolutely. pass that knowledge pass that opportunity down. yeah yeah facts yeah i like that global and then the shit honestly not the, and she yo I, she look good to me too yeah yeah i mean i'm not saying she's the you know girl of my dreams but i find her attractive and yeah. one of the reasons is because i love how in that breakfast club interview like she was like shit i'm thick for real she don't have a bbl or nothing and she stood up she got a little you know what i'm saying a little, uh -huh. little, little, little pumpkin pie back there <laughs> and like showed it off or whatever but that's attractive to me and like I saw a video when she had like no makeup or lashes yeah. on she's fucking pretty she's without pretty. all that shit yeah. she's really pretty she got nice eyes I'm like shit mm -hmm. and shout out to my man's Gleesh my man's Jared he fucking loves her he's a security guard um, <laughs> a bodyguard and he actually uh, did a job for her when she was in DC once oh, and he was like nice. yo I'm holding down my wifey tonight <laughs> it was it was funny I um, love her I absolutely love her solely because um i think she's just very genuine and she really can spit like yeah. she can spit yeah I, i'll give you that one she um, got bars she do <laughs> all right so last award of the year kiwi who was your 2022 player of the year <laughs> i really wanted to give it to karisha mm -hmm. but i'm gonna go with lori harvey Ooh. Solely because nobody knows her business. Nobody. And that's how you really keep it playing. Nobody. Nobody knows her business. Like at all. And and to add to that, doesn't she have some type of contract that dude that that dudes recently. that she has to uh date they have to sign? sign NDA. Something for like a million or some yeah. shit. But you know, I did see a story about Janet Jackson, even though this ain't you know, but I just saw this story. Mm hmm but Janet Jackson got married to this guy, and mm -hmm. in the prenup, she said if they were married for five years, he had to give her a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. and, and then if she had his baby, he had to give her another hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. And she had the baby on the fifth year. Mm -hmm. And that, <laughs> and she was like forty nine when she yeah, had the baby. She was like old as shit when she yeah. had. The, I mean, I don't mean to say old as shit like that. I mean it but... is what it is. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was some type of you know surgical thing to make yeah. that happen yeah um, something. i forgot exactly I mean, what it's called know. where they kind of where they kind of put the egg in the inside of her mm -hmm. and i forgot what it's called but it's bread but i mean shit if you yeah. got 100 mil that ain't nothing but chunk change at that Thank point you. yeah that's a good one that's, that's a, good a good one, one. but Lori harvey solely because she do not have people in her business don't men be spoiling her mm. and she's very feminine um i love that about her and the reasons I say she's very feminine is because she's not, she don't tell her business. Mm -hmm. She don't respond to shit. It is what it is. If she want to leave, she gone. If she want a new man, she's in there. She picks, I say she picks really good men. I don't know about future, but for the most part, I feel like she picks good men. Um, and leave them hurt too. You saw the video yeah. after her and Michael B. Jordan broke up when he was at the basketball game. <laughs> Yo, that was, was so sick. tough to watch because you saw the pain in that man's eyes and he was trying to hold it back so hard and that oh, smile. I, wouldn't even, I would have not even left the house if I was him that night. That was... Yeah, what was he doing at the game? That was very... Because he was with Drake. That was very... Of course he was with Drake. That Drake is, is the sucker of the year, okay? So, so I think Drake is... I, I think he aims to be the player of the year, but it, it he just... He sucks. He's a it, simp. It backfires on him. <laughs> um, so, my player of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. 
I thought about giving it initially to Tory Lanez. Oh my God! After the story, after the you know the stories and accusations come out about you know who he was sitting at you the can't time. You can't say nothing until the trial comes out. Huh? Yeah, I feel like we can't talk about him until the trial is over. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm not talking about whether he shot Meg or not. I'm talking about who he was dealing with at the time of Meg. It was Meg, her friend, and some other chick or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he was still moving in on Kylie. I mean, so mm -hmm. since that story came out, I mean, that's impressive. And then you can kind of flip it and say Meg was player of the year because she was... Anyway. No, Meg was not player of the year. So can a... So can a so if a chick she's sleeping with multiple dudes so if a, if a if a guy is sleeping with multiple high status women at the same time he gets player of the year can that same award go to a woman well i gave it to lori harvey as a but woman, she was dealing with one at a time you get I, what i'm saying yeah, if a guy it, if a guy has multiple women at the same time that he's dealing with or at least within like a week apart and they're all high status women that's some player shit he getting player of the year but if meg was doing that same thing with ben simmons the baby and tory lanes around the same time frame would mm, she be able to get player of the i year? feel like women are player of the year when nobody knows who they fucking with mm, good point you getting your shit and nobody know okay Meg is a little sloppy now. I love Meg. Yeah, because your boy. But she a little sloppy. Yeah, and your boy was your boy. Pride I would was give hurt. player of the year to hurt. Janae before I would give it to Meg. I fucking love Janae. Because <laughs> Janae be, you know, she be she be pick, she be having the right. She be having yeah. these men. She yeah. got two really good baby daddies. I'm I'm a, just saying. And I'm her third one. <laughs> All right, but I'm gonna give player of the year to. Very, uh, very weird. But I'm gonna give Player of the Year to Pete Davidson, Pistol Pete. That's what I'm gonna call him at this point. You talking Pistol about Pete. Brittany Renner, baby daddy? Nah, Pete Davidson is the dude that Kim Kardashian was just dealing with, and now oh Pete Davidson, you know what? And now I just heard he moved on to some other, you know, you like can give it to him, chick or whatever. I don't know how he got Kim Kardashian. But and and, got and his, his his track history before Kim, it was some other chick that was bad, and before that, it was uh, Ariana Grande. He's a wow. he's a sniper, and wow, yo, I don't know. His, I can give you that one though. I can, I can give you that. Yo, one. he he must be buck wild. <laughs> his, his pipe style must be buck wild. Pause. I mean, that's the only thing I think First of. He of must all, be he gotta on have chicks. really good um, talk game because yeah. to me, well, he he's a funny, goofy guy. I was about to say it's something that he's doing along those lines. Like if, he's reeling a man with that first. If you're funny, listen. Two He's things that, a man with that. Two things that I picked up on that three things. The top three things that I picked up on as far as pulling a woman is this. One, sense of humor. Mm -hmm. If you can make a laugh, you're in there. Mm -hmm. Two, smelling good. Yeah. If you're smelling good, oh, you're if you in there. You smell good. Three, just overall confidence. Absolutely. If you have those three That is big dick energy, okay? That is all you need. <laughs> Because first of all, mean. it takes a lot of confidence to make somebody laugh. Mm -hmm. I'll be making men laugh. Yeah. I don't even think I'm that funny, but I can make men laugh. Because if know you how to make it, men laugh. Because that means that the the person that's laughing sees as you're not being uptight. Yes, absolutely. Right? You're being humorous. To be humorous, you have to be loose. You have to be yourself. Facts. If you're all uptight, you you're not gonna be say okay nothing. With yeah. Maybe embarrassing or something. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it. <laughs> That's it. So listen, I just Seriously. I just gave free game. Free, yeah, he really did. Quick rundown: smelling good, <laughs> sense of humor, and confidence. That's literally now all that, you fucking that, need. That sense of humor you're gonna have to work at, yeah. and it's gonna come from the confidence. So yeah, you gotta no, get the confidence first. Ain't no corny shit. Yeah, Can't no be on no corny shit. shit. Yeah. I mean, corny is okay sometimes. But you have to you have to know how to make the corny. You look gotta mix good. the. I was about to say you gotta mix the corny with the confidence. You have to know how to make that look good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. Cool. So. Those awards Pete were Davidson great. Davidson was a good choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, I'll give it to him. I think he that looks like a, a lizard. You know what I mean? I think the he dude. He definitely looks like he smokes a lot of cigarettes. Yeah, I think the dude is very weird, but I mean, game recognized game. Apex. He's pulled him left and right. So he's doing something right. So I'll give yeah, it to like, him. Yeah, like look at Uzi and um, JT. Like, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, because Uzi looked like a gargoyle, but he. <laughs> He got JT. He got JT. Yeah. And she happy with him. They've been together like they got their names tattooed on each other. There you go. Well, listen, um, Kiwi, thank you for running it back. 
Of course. Uh, on this special holiday themed episode of Day by Day Podcast. Yeah. I really appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate the festive energy. Absolutely. And I appreciate the honesty throughout the whole entirety of this show. Got to do it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> everyone tuning in, I thank y'all, whether you're listening on your respective podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Day by Day Podcast is everywhere. If you're watching on YouTube, I'd like to thank you as well. Um, I ask that y'all subscribe, like, to kind of keep this algorithm going and it helps support the channel. Uh, but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls with cornrows, perms, and curls, make sure that y'all stay safe. Hey. Stay sane out here. Amen. Stay mentally strong. But most importantly, stay blessed. Stay blessed. Peace. Peace.